What's up you guys, Miko here from thatremotelife.com and today I wanna to talk to you guys about something that is critically important to working online, whether you're a digital nomad or working from home, and that is your internet speed connection. Now you may be familiar with apps like this one called Speed Test by Ookla, and this app allows you to connect to the internet and actually test the quality of that connection. How fast is that internet? And this is super important when doing Zoom video calls. But have you ever tested your internet and found that it has good upload and download speeds, but then you try to get on that Zoom video call and it's just a laggy and terrible experience? Well, today I'm gonna show you exactly why that is and what to look for in speed tests to ensure that you have a good experience on your video call. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you are interested in the digital nomad lifestyle and building a business online. I publish new videos every single week, uh, whether they're interviews with experts and other entrepreneurs or videos like this one in which I try to break down a part of the lifestyle to make things easier on you. But if that sounds like your type of thing, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. And if you like this video, leave it a like. I always appreciate a nice, thumbs up. All right, well, with that, let's dive into what these speed tests mean. Now, you're likely already familiar with the upload and download speed. It's pretty straightforward. Upload is how quickly you can take data from your computer and send it to the internet, and download is how quickly you can take data from the internet and then bring it into your device. However, you may have noticed that there's a few other statistics that apps like speed test show you. And in fact, those may be far more important to a good video call than the upload and download speeds. Those statistics are latency or otherwise known as ping, jitter, and data loss. And all three of those work together to tell you just how quality that internet connection is for things that you do live, like streaming, or playing video games online, or you guessed it, Zoom video calls. Your connection's latency, or like we said, uh, it's otherwise referred to as ping, is how long it takes for information to be sent from your computer to the internet and back. Whether you know it or whether you wanna believe it or not, uh, this isn't instantaneous. I know that in our modern world today, it may seem like everything happens in the blink of an eye, but it actually doesn't. It still takes time for information to be sent back and forth from the internet. And it's not a lot of time, but that time matters when you're doing things live on the internet. And that's exactly what the ping measures. In general, the higher that your ping rate is, the slower and laggier your video experience is going to be because it's taking longer for that video, that information to go back and forth from your device to the internet, servers, and back. And you may have noticed this in the past if you've ever been on a Zoom uh, call where it kind of gets laggy or you start saying something and then there's a big gap of time before the person that you're speaking with starts to respond. That's essentially a sign of there being a long, ping time. It's taking a lot of time for them to receive that information and then for their response to get back to you. Now going deeper from there, your ping won't always be static. It's not constantly the same. It's actually constantly differing. And the amount by which it's differing is very important and it's called your jitter. This is pretty straightforward as to why it's important to your internet connection. If your jitter rate is really high, meaning that your ping is going from low to high to then low to then high again, it's essentially a very inefficient internet connection. And it's making it harder for the entire system to work in order to uh, provide you with a good Zoom video call. So the higher the jitter rate, the more that that ping is moving and constantly changing. The higher the rate of that change, the worse your video connection will be. And finally, the third piece of statistic here uh, that you will find in a test like the one from the speed test app is your loss. Now, this is something that's really interesting because I actually didn't know much about this before, but it makes a lot of sense. Essentially, information is not sent over the internet in its entirety the way that we might think. 
For example, if I were to take a picture and want to send it to my friend, that picture is not sent in its perfect entirety over the internet. It's actually broken down into lots of small pieces of data that are sent over the internet individually. And what that allows it to do is that every single little packet of data is able to find the fastest and most efficient way through the internet uh, on its own. And then once all of those little pieces of data reach the intended destination, they're put together into the whatever it is that you sent, in this case, a picture. And this is where data loss comes in. Essentially, in a perfect system, every single piece of data that made up your picture would go through the internet and end up in its destination. However, sometimes when the internet connection isn't good, not all pieces of that data make it to their end destination. And some amount of data, some amount of little pieces from that main image, from that first image, are actually lost in the process. And this is what's called data loss. And some data loss is normal and it's fine. Essentially, you're gonna be able to do your video call or your picture is gonna be delivered in its entirety. However, the higher the data loss, the higher the chance that either that image like we've been talking about in this example uh, fails and isn't able to reach its end destination or in the case of a video call, that video call may get dropped. So this is something that I've experienced in the past and I'm sure you have as well where you're in a video call and it's kind of laggy and you're having some trouble and then boom, that Zoom video call just drops. And that's likely because the uh, internet connection is reaching a point of instability the data loss percentage is actually climbing. And then finally, it's just so much data is being lost along the way that you can't sustain the video call. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, well, okay, Miko, how much exactly is okay? How much ping is good? How much jitter is okay? And what amount of data loss percentage in these tests spells trouble? And well, lucky enough for us, Zoom have actually published exactly the statistics that you want to look for when testing an internet connection to make sure that that video call goes through seamlessly. And here are those numbers. So for a latency or your ping, Zoom is saying that you want to have 150 milliseconds or less. For jitter, they're saying that you want to have 40 milliseconds or less and any data loss over 2% is a sign of trouble. Now, obviously, these are not the numbers that you should be looking for and hoping to see, but they essentially are the end limit of what a good inter internet connection is for video calls. In reality, you want those numbers to be a lot lower. Uh, after kind of doing the research for this video and grabbing my phone and running around to a bunch of coffee shops and stuff like that and testing a bunch of these internet speeds, I found that uh, a lot of times it was a lot lower than this. In fact, my local connection here had only about a 1.2 milliseconds uh, of latency, uh, I think about like two or three milliseconds of jitter and a 0% packet loss. And I found that that was the same with most good connections as I went from here to a really good coffee shop down the street to then the co-working space uh, you know, on the other side of town. But if you were to go to a coffee shop that you've never been to before and you run a speed test and you notice that one of these things is kind of pushing the edge, maybe the latency is pushing 140, 130, and the packet loss is saying a 1% or a 2%, perhaps uh, you should reconsider staying there. Look at these as warning signs of a possible unstable connection because don't forget that the more devices that connect to that internet connection, the worse these tests, uh, the worse that these results are going to get. But all right, you guys, uh, I hope that you found this video valuable and that you think this is going to be helpful to you as you continue your life online and you continue to work online. Make sure that you maybe save these statistics, put them in a note or something like that on your phone and compare it every time that you go to a coffee shop or co-working space, or even the other thing to do is uh, when you are staying at an Airbnb, like I am at the moment, ask for that internet connection, ask for that host 
to send you a screenshot of their results on the internet to ensure that you have a good internet connection wherever it is that you're staying around the world. But that's enough from me. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I publish a new video every single week, most weeks too, uh, about the digital nomad lifestyle and interviews with experts and other online entre entrepreneurs.